I'm Eric Nasa with NewShooter.com, and I'm here in Burbank at the Canna facility, and I'm joined with Alex. Alex, what's your title here? I'm a pro market specialist for uh, cinema and pro video. Well, we have something that looks kind of familiar in front of us. Oh, come on, it's, it's not really actually that familiar, is it? <laughs> well, it's the same. If, you're, if you've seen our C700, we basically have a new product. It's our C700 full frame. So we've taken the original C700 body, we put a new sensor on the inside of it. So you're exactly right. It's basically the exact same camera, the whole new sensor on the inside. Let's talk a little bit about this sensor uh, during your, uh, when you showed it to us during your, your, your PowerPoint, excuse me. Uh, it has a very interesting sensor. Mm -hmm. It is full frame, but it's not like all full frame sensors. Talk to me a little bit about what makes this full frame sensor in the C700FF. C700FF. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that sensor. So it's a 17 by 9 full frame sensor. So as opposed to what we have in some of our other products, uh, that's 36 by 24, this one is more of a 17 by 9 aspect ratio. So it's perfectly suited to work in a DCI 4096 by 2160 or the equivalent of a 5.9K, which is what we actually have in here, the 5952 by 3140 will perfectly match those workflows. So instead of losing data, uh, like if you had a 4x3 sensor or something a little bit um, similar to how other people have done it, Canon specifically designed it to match the 17 by 9 aspect ratio. Now, is this a first as far as you, you know CMOS sensors that are in that 17 by 9 aspect ratio? Um, I believe that Panavision's DXL is the same way, uh, but a, a lot of the other full frame sensors that are out there are um, 36 by 24 or have their own proprietary size. So talk to me a little about uh, the sensor. Does it have dual pixel autofocus as well? And yes. how, does it, how does it perform? So the sensor has dual pixel AF, which we introduced in the C300 Mark II. Um, it, we have it now, still same 80% coverage, but it will cover it when you're shooting in 6K. Uh, when you do 6K on this camera, you have to shoot in RAW and that's gonna require the codex recorder, which we had for the original C700 as well. So if you wanna do 6K in this camera, you have to use the codex and you have to record in RAW, but if you use the EF mode on that and you use EF uh, compatible uh, autofocus lenses, the dual pixel AF will work on 80% of the large sensor. Does it have the same codex that the C700 uh, has? Yes, it's the same box. Um, so if you already own that or if you've already used it, it's the exact same thing. Again, everything is identical in this camera except for the new sensor. Just like the original C700, we're offering ProRes in this camera. Um, it has limitations in terms of frame rate. It also, the camera also does XF AVC. So you still can do 4K internally to the uh, C700, uh, just like the original. The, you can do 4096 by 2160 up to 60 frames in Canon's XF AVC format. If you want to do ProRes, you're limited to 2997 um, in 4K. So let's talk a little bit about how the camera deals with 4K. Mm -hmm. So it is a 5.9K sensor, um, but what's amazing is, and, and to me the really exciting feature of this camera is, if you want to shoot in 4K internally to the CFast cards, it will oversample the 5.9K without losing any data, and again that's that 17 by 9 sensor, to bring it down to that 4096 by 2160. So you're basically taking more pixels of information and shoving them into a smaller box, if you think about it. So that box is going to have better color reproduction, it's going to be sharper, uh, and we've done internal tests. It is a better 4K. So if you're not if you do not want to go down the 6K RAW workflow, or if you um, don't want to use codecs and you want to use the internal recording, this is a better 4K inside of this camera. So this isn't just for our A-level customers. We really think that uh, all different types of customers are going to want to use this, especially people who own our DSLR lenses that cover large sensor. Mm -hmm. You can put our 11 to 24 lens on this. You can put our 24 to 105. All of our L series, 70 to 200, they'll all cover this large sensor and then oversample that 6K resolution to create that great 4K because what we've always done in our C-series cameras is we've had a larger resolution sensor that's oversampled and created an HD. Now the C300 Mark II, the 700 are a little different, the original 700, because those are 4K sensors capable of recording 4K. But this one finally is a higher resolution and to me that's what you really want to have is higher resolution so when you record the 4K it's going to be a really great 4K. And I like to work like that, actually. I shoot 4K and I deliver an HD. Exactly. I think my image looks better. Me too. It holds up better, yeah. even online and, and everything. You mm -hmm. can do that compression if the image is, is larger. I agree. I, I like to shoot at 4K no matter what, even if I'm going to deliver an HD, because I just think the image is going to look better. And that's what you're doing in the camera, you know, in real time, if you think about it. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, you were saying this is a better 4K. Are you saying that this camera, the C700FF, is a better 4K camera than the C700? The 4K, if you shoot in full frame, 4K will look 
sharper and will the colors will reproduce a little bit better. Um, it's still, if you're in Super 35 mode, it will look identical to the original C700. So I, don't, I still think the C700 has an incredible image. This just has newer technology in it. By taking that higher resolution and processing it in camera, it's going to make a more pleasant 4K image. The sensor is a little bit, I mean like tiny little bit smaller than 6K as well. Yeah, it's 5.9, so 5952, you know, we're 48 lines basically away from hitting 6K. I would, <coughs> excuse me, I would still say 5.9K because that's exactly what it is. Um, but, you know, if you want to round up and say 6K, I think that's a little bit easier. Now, how about when you're using S35, does this crop the sensor down mm -hmm. and how does, that, how does that work? Yeah, so a lot of people are probably concerned about older lenses or lenses that are designed for Super 35. The camera will window into a Super 35 mode. So it'll, it, for all intents and purposes, it'll act just like the original C700 if you want it to. Um, so if you want to use, you know, our 30 to 300 or 14.5 to 60 or any of our compact servo lenses, they will cover on this camera, but you have to activate that mode on it. Now, do you lose a detail image quality? Does anything sort of change when you decide to go into S35 mode? No, no, you, you get basically everything the same other than just, uh, you know, the field of view of your lenses. So a lot of people want to use full frame because it's a different way to photograph. You can actually go closer, you get more of the world. It's kind of a, a lot of these movies lately that have been Academy Award nominated have done this look and something that I've wanted for a long time since I've held a 5D Mark II and I saw that image going through there, I said, I wish we put this sensor into a cinema body. And that's exactly what we've done here. That's pretty great. And it comes in different mounts. You can get it in, in, in uh, EF as well as PL. Mm -hmm. So you can get it in our locking EF, which is just like PL, the mount spins instead of the actual lens. You can get it in PL. And then we also make a B4 mount adapter. So if you want to use legacy B4 lenses or even modern B4 mount lenses uh, that a lot of our broadcast customers use, uh, this camera can work for it. It can go right on your shoulder and work more like a in a broadcast live TV environment, or it can be stripped down and built up like a cinema package. We really think this camera can hit both of those markets. Now, the adapter for B4, does it have any sort of optic corrections in there to allow that B4, or I guess it would be more like a two-thirds chip mm -hmm. style uh, a lens, how does the camera or the mount deal with chromatic aberration and covering the lens circle itself? So we have some chromatic aberration correction built in uh, in terms of our software. The mount actually will allow you to put B4 mount lenses, but it will uh, limit your recording capabilities. You have to shoot in 1920 by 1080, you have to shoot in a certain frame rate, but it will optically stretch that to fit the um, sensor inside of the camera. So it'll do that once you put it into, once you activate the B4 mount, you put the mount on and then you tell the camera, hey, I got the B4 mount on and it will automatically do that for you. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to deal with having any kind of optics inside the B4 mount itself. The camera is doing all of this correction. Mm -hmm. Well, there's optics inside of the mount that will do it, but then the camera will then read it in the proper way it's supposed to read it. You can buy the original C700, and it's going to cost a, a little bit less than the C700 FF. Later on, you'll be able to buy the full frame sensor and, and replace it. Same, same way you can buy our rolling shutter that we have available for this one. So the, the idea of this product is that it's not only going to live for a few years, it can live for a much longer um, lifespan. And that's something we want rental houses to know because they're really the main customer for these A camera. Um, we still have a lot of owner operators who buy it, but we're, you know, the main customer for these really expensive products are rental houses. And they need to know that their investment is going to pay off for longer periods of time. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with the system. I understand the price is not set yet. What is the ballpark that you're thinking that, that maybe the camera will retail for? So we're thinking it's going to be in the $35,000 range, but they're still kind of working out the details of what that's going to be. And then also, we don't know the cost of swapping the sensor yet um, and how that process is going to go, but we'll know soon. Uh, the mount is not, it's not, you know, being like advertised as a swappable mount, but it is swappable. Mm -hmm. You can change it. Yeah, so rental houses do this now. Um, you kind of are doing it at your own um, control. We don't, the warranty will be void if you do that yourself. Canon still wants you to send it into our facility, uh, mainly just to maintain the quality of it. Uh, but we have lots of customers um, out on the West Coast that do this already. Um, they know, they're very, they're, they're very technically savvy. They know how to open these things up. They know how to use shims. They have really high-end precision tools, just like what we have here in the Canon Burbank facility. So uh, along that, line, you can do it. But we don't. We certainly don't have a system that's user swappable. Uh, we're hopefully moving towards that, but as of right now, um, it is still a Canon service uh, support thing. Okay. 
How's the dynamic range performance on this camera? So it's still 15 stops of dynamic range, and that's how that's that log two that we have that really helps push the detail in the highlights and in the shadows. Um, you need a 10-bit or a 12-bit workflow for something like that, so this camera does both 10-bit and 12-bit, and so does the C300 Mark II. Um, so that's pretty much why we have created those two things for uh, the log two for these cameras, is because you have to have a 10-bit, 12-bit workflow to really utilize the, that amount of information. Mm -hmm. All right, is there anything I haven't asked you or you want to tell me about the new full frame C700? I mean, it's a really exciting product. Like I said before, I'm, I've been waiting seven years or so for us to have a cinema large sensor um, product. I, I, I love photographing with a large sensor on the still side as well too. Um, it's just my uh, aesthetic that I like. But again, some jobs require Super 35, some jobs will require full frame because of the lenses. So, you know, to me, this product can do all of that. And that's, that's what I really think is so incredible about this. It's a very versatile product. And that's what you need when you, when you charge this kind of money, you need to have something that can work on many different types of jobs. Mm -hmm. It needs to be able to do lots of different things. And that's why we've kind of advertised it as a broadcast camera and a cinema camera, because we want people to know, especially rental houses, that this camera can rent two live productions, this camera can rent to cinema productions. If you're an owner operator, you now have the full frame option, you have the Super 35 option, you can rent the recorder if you want to do raw. So there's a lot of great tools that come with this camera that's right out of the box, works really, really well. All right, Alex, thank you so much, yeah. appreciate it. Really exciting new release.